Hey there friends, Martin here and welcome to the final part of this short World Creator 2022 series. And this time we'll finally export our landscape into Blender where I'll show you some tricks and tips on how to make the results even better. So here we are where we left off in the last part and now I want to export everything into a different software package. Well, you guessed it, it happens through this third icon in here, this floppy disk one, and here there is nothing. Well, that's because you will need to define some of the export elements yourself. So click here and yes, you can start with exporting a mesh, for example, of your terrain. Here, as you would probably expect, you can find formats like FBX, OBJ and others, plus the option to include normal map data, colors and more. Me, however, I usually like to go another route, using displacement maps and displace modifier in Blender. So for that, let me in fact get rid of this mesh element and instead choose the height map. Here, I usually choose an EXR format with float32 set in bit depth, which gives Blender enough data to work with. I leave everything else to default, including this game engine set to Unity, because Blender is built on OpenGL, just like Unity. And next up, color map. For that, I mostly use PNG and leave everything else as is. No need to go with 16 bits. And we will work on this texture some more later. Normal map is a must. And again, PNG with default values is quite okay for us. You can choose 16 bit, but usually it's not necessary, I think. And finally, there is this splat map, which will become useful for enhancing some of your results. It is kind of weird being displayed red like this, but when you start shuffling through the layers down here, you will quickly realize what it is. It basically shows masks of your various texture layers. So here you can see the second texture we made, uh, the one covering the island. And this one, it is the little river spots we added over it which means this first one is basically our underlying ocean layer. So simply export this as PNG. Now all you need to do is to specify your export folder in here and then proceed to export all. One more note though, down here you can see the current resolution we are using. And again, this is connected to this precision menu over here. At one meter, we are at 1K resolution, but we can go higher to 2K, 4K or even 8K if your machine doesn't blow up. And that is everything I'm using for the export most of the time. So hit this button and let's move on. Here we are finally in Blender. So I start with this plane, subdivide it like 80 times, and then I scale it up to a size of about 2000 meters. You'll probably have to increase this number in the far clipping here to see the plane. Uh, the size doesn't really matter that much though. You can scale it up or down later. Only if you'll have different values than me, you will have to adjust the strength of your displacement based on that. What is important though, is that you apply the scale after you make the plane bigger. Because displacements are usually quite wonky with object sizes not applied. Next, go to modifiers tab and add in a displace modifier here immediately changing these coordinates to UV so that its mapping is based on the plane's UV coordinates and then hit this new here to create a new texture that will be displacing the terrain. For that you actually have to go down here to the texture menu and load one. You find this height EXR in the folder you've chosen in World Creator. So load it and make sure you have this linear color space activated. With the linear command, Blender will be able to interpret all the height data to squeeze all the details out of your map. Since we've made our plane quite large, you need to go quite a bit bigger with the strength. Try something like uh, 100. Well, well, something's shaping up, but it's quite low poly. Of course, this displacement method heavily depends on the amount of polygons your plane has. So adding a sub D modifier might help. Well, it will help because I've done it before. Uh, <laughs> so add it, increase it, and ha, each level we add now squeezes more detail out of your displacement map. Of course, it will grow slower with each new level. So I actually recommend setting it to about three for the viewport, but go with five in render settings. 
And to see it clearer, you can uncheck these overlays here. And of course, if you find your island too low, you can always scale up the strength here. One last thing we can do, it is usually better to right click and set the normals to smooth and make sure you don't have auto normals activated in here. Since I'm currently using EV, we can activate the MPN occlusion and raise its values. And also if we add in a temporary HDR image, you will be able to see the displacement much better. Let's just test it with the viewport subdivision of five. And very nice, isn't it? By the way, at this stage, sometimes you might get these weird raised edges where Blender basically does not displace these vertices on the very edge of the plane. For that, there is fortunately a quick fix. You just Alt Shift select all these edge rows of vertices and add them into a new vertex group. Then underneath the displace modifier, you add a mask modifier. Set your vertex group in here and invert it. Now all your problematic edges have been masked away. And if you increase the threshold, you can increase this edge tolerance, revealing most of the good geometry all the way to here. Okay, it might not actually be a solution, but at least it's an, let's say, elegant workaround. Now to add the rest of the image textures, let's take this plane, add in a BSDF shader on it and switch to shader editor here. We actually have a pretty easy job. We just plug in two textures that we have. You can plug in the base color quickly using control T on this BSDF node. And this is a shortcut available to you if you have this node wrangler add on active, which you definitely should. It offers a lot of useful shortcuts for the shader editor. So load up the texture right here, find the color map and open it. Okay, it's there, but we need to play with the look of it. Let's focus on these two values here, the specular and the roughness, because those are making the surface looking kind of wet. If I only have color map at my disposal, what I sometimes like to do is take it, plug it into RGB to black and white node and drive it into the specular socket while raising the roughness to higher values like 0.7. Now, of course, we can also add the normal map, which will make all the difference in the smallest details and finalize our result. You can actually just drag the image from your explorer into the shader editor. Now you can connect it to the mapping data like this, set it to non-color and plug it into a normal map node for it to work properly. And finally, to the normal socket. All right, you can now switch to cycles with GPU active to test the look. And as you can see, the terrain is taking more data from the HDRI in cycles. So it makes it look much nicer, though of course, slower to render. However, this better lighting quality is a reason why I usually render the final result in cycles. The exported texture from World Creator is too dark. So what I like to do is to add curves node here and raise it like this, making the texture a little bit brighter. Now you'll probably often find out what I did, that the exported color map is not really detailed enough. So that's why I often go to Photoshop and using some of these landscape textures that I have and that I offer over at my Patreon, I overlay them over the color map. For that, I use the splat map that we've exported and I use it basically as a mask so I can mask out, for example, the island terrain or the underlying ocean. You can then see that without and with the additional detail, it makes quite a lot of difference. You then just save out this new texture, replace it in Blender and I think it's a nice improvement. In the end, I just added some 2D clouds, some 3D trees from Scatter and my own rock assets and I scattered them onto the surface. But this is of course something outside the scope of this tutorial. You can learn all my techniques in my Master 3D Environments course in Blender at cgboost.com. And hey, since you've finished this series, I have a special bonus for you, a 15% discount for the course. So just have a look or watch the whole intro at the link in the description. And then if you like, you can use the coupon code MKSubscribers15. This way, you'll actually support this channel as well. 
And with that, I do hope you liked this World Creator 2022 series. And if there's more topics you'd like me to focus on in the future, just let me know in the comments. Until next time, stay creative my friends, Martin out.